everyone and welcome to episode 14 of the Artisan Workshop tutorial series. In this episode we will start working on the last gameplay part of the mod which is the workshop management part and more specifically we will be adding game menus that let us navigate to the workshop management UI. So game menus are a convenient way of adding UI to the campaign map as long as the menus that you want to build fit with the capabilities of the game menu. So this you see on the left here when you visit town this is a game menu the thing that also when you start a fight this here is the same game menu. So the game menu is great when you basically have a list of options that you want the player to choose from. And if we come back to the town menu you can see that for example if we go to the tavern district you get new set of options and then you can go back to the town center and same thing in the arena you get a new sub menu and then you have option to go back and leave so the menus have some sort of simple way of navigating between them so let's go look at the game code and try to figure out how the game menus are built and the game menus are always added in the behaviors uh, with a method called add game menus and if we search for add game menus, we get a ton of results. But if we show only the exact results, we get very manageable lists of places where player worlds adds stuff to the game menus. So let's go look for example player town visit campaign behavior. First of all, let's look at where this add game menus is used. So they have this after new game created, which is listener or events on new game created and on game loaded event and this is basically the exact same thing we did in our own code except we used on session launched which covers both new game and game loaded so i don't know why they have chosen to listen to two different events with the same listener but but it doesn't really matter so in their listener for these events they just call add game menu with this campaign starter so this is basically exactly the same thing we did with the dialogues. If you look at our code, we have on session launched and then in add dialogues, we get the campaign game starter and we can start adding our dialogues into the starter. Here in their add game menus, they get the campaign starter and they just start adding game menus here. So in the beginning, let's try to add an option to the town menu that lets us go into our workshop management menu. So we want to build an UI that lets you manage the workshop that you own. And for the scope of this mod, for now, we will do this only for breweries, since all our features are really built around breweries at this point. So let's try to add a new game option like the ones that they have here. So for example, this one is Town Arena, go to the arena. I think we can just do basically whatever this does. But first we need our own add game menus. So let's do add game menus with the starter. And let's ask Visual Studio to generate this method for us. And here we basically want to do just this. So let's copy this. Go to the arena. So town is correct. This is the basically the input token. That we have in the dialogues except here it is called menu id the option id this can be just our town workshop for example let's say this will be if this could be go to workshop or let's just call this go to brewery and then they have condition delegates and let's go look at one of these condition delegates. So this will be method that accepts menu callback args. And um, looking at this, they use some sort of menu helper. So this looks actually a bit more complicated than what I want to see. So let's just go to some other place where they add menus. So let's go to, for example, prison break campaign behavior. Let's see if they have some simpler conditions here. And this looks much more manageable. So here in their in their condition delegate, they just return a boolean, depending on if this button should exist or not. Uh, so if player can do a prison break, 
you return a true, otherwise you return a false. And they set some other arguments here, such as option leave type. Let's go look at the option leave types. So this can be, and this can be, for example, a sub menu, grade, weight. So this will basically determine the icon that you will see in the menu next to your option text. You also have a tooltip and an option to set this as a disabled. So this would be if you if you return true, but set this to false. Basically mean that you show the button, but it will be grayed out. So in our case, we just want to show the option to go into the workshop management if the player actually owns the workshop. So let's see if we can tame this into something that we can see a bit better. So here you have, first of all, a condition. So this condition is what we were just looking at, something that returns Boolean. So let's also look at an example for a consequence. So here, this will also get many callback arcs, but there is no return value. And this will usually just point you to the next menu or execute some other action. So in our case, we copy this add game menu option from the code that moves you to the town arena. So here you can see that our consequence is just switching menu to another room or to another to another menu ID. So in this case, we switch to town arena, but we can also go to town workshop or something like that. And in our consequence, we don't need to touch these callback arcs usually or basically never. We also need to write our own condition. And this will also take many callback arcs. So let's write this as a lambda here. So this is just inline function. And this needs to check if the player actually owns this workshop. So let's look at something like, um, let's look at something like settlement, current settlement, which is where the player is right now. And this is also town, since we know that we are in the town menu. And let's look at the workshops. And the zeroth workshop is always the artisans, but let's assume that the player owns the first workshop. And let's compare if this owner is main hero. And if this is true, then we could return true to show this menu button. And of course, right now we don't actually check that this is brewery. So we could say that this will be go to workshop. And let me actually get the workshop into a variable here so that And this looks a bit nicer. And um, and we also want to set some of the callback arcs. So for example, let's actually name this argument as arcs. And let's set something like, uh, what were they doing here again? Let's set option leave type to top menu, which will give us the basically the hamburger icon with the three lines. And do we need something else? I don't think we actually need anything else necessarily. Well, eventually we will need this town workshop menu ID. But we can try to run this and see if we get this new button, if we own the, wor the first workshop in the town. So let's actually buy all the workshops and see if we get a new button in the menu. And after I bought the butter here, we actually get this button to go to workshop. And if we actually click here, I think something bad will happen. And we get a crash because this menu does not exist because we didn't add it yet. And you saw there that our option was added on the in the bottom. Here you can actually set an index which will sort of govern where your menu, menu will be, which can be used to put your menu option is either higher or lower in the list. But you need to kind of just figure out which number will work. So for example, let's try number nine here. And let's see where the game will put our option if we try this index. So let's buy the battery again. And you see that with number nine, it put our option to go to the workshop here, just above, wait here for some time. Do you see that this is not actually the ninth option or anything like that? 
So if we actually count this, we have one, two. So you see this is actually eighth in the list. You might you might assume that nine would put us down on the bottom. But I think it puts us here because there are some hidden options above this. So this is actually the ninth from the top if you account for the hidden options. So now you can see that our button is sort of working. But if we were to buy another workshop, this would of course not show up as another button. Because we only added one button here that checks if you own the workshop index 0 in the town. So if you would want to show multiple buttons in the case that the player owns multiple workshops in the same menu, you would have to add separate options for each workshop in town. So if we want to have multiple buttons, we need to call this add game menu option multiple times for each one of our buttons. So let's actually extract this into a method. And let's call this add workshop button. And we will call this, let's say, five times. So i is more than five. And then we will, let's give the i here. And over here, first of all, we need to add the i to the option id. Then let's actually rename the workshop into brewery. So the button will say go to brewery, since we only really want to show this for breweries. So let's do workshop type, not that type, workshop type. String id equals brewery. Let's add that to our condition. And instead of looking at the first workshop, let's look at the ith workshop. We also need a condition that checks that the current settlement actually has uh, enough workshops, because otherwise we might go over the size of this array. So let's see, town workshops dot length. So let's see, i needs to be smaller. Well, let's say if i is larger than or equal than the workshop length, then we return false. Otherwise, our workshop can be the i's workshop. So now we check that this workshop is owned by the main hero and that this workshop is a brewery. And we add five buttons like this to the list of buttons. And I also want to have some sort of thing that shows us which one uh, of the workshops players selected in case they click one of these. So this here is uh, the delegate that gets called when player actually clicks on one of the options. So let's add here something that sets the selected workshop workshop when the player clicks here. So selected workshop. Why is there no auto competition? And this is complaining. That selected workshop is not static. But why would that be an issue? Oh, because this is static. So this should not be static, of course. Um, so selected workshop is the settlement, current settlement, town, workshops, at i. Okay, so now we actually get our selected workshop when we choose one of the options. And I want to reiterate that we add five of these buttons because we sort of know that there will be not more than this, because we sort of know that there won't be more than five workshops in any town. But if there were possibility to be more workshops per town, we would have to add more buttons that each check for one workshop. Another option we could do would be that um, we could program this so that the first button takes the first player brewery and the second button takes the second player brewery. But I think this is a much simpler approach where each button will be only responsible for one workshop in the town. And this will also scale nicely um, if we ever want to extend this to handle other workshops besides brewery as well. But now, even after all this, we don't still yet have this menu ID town workshop. So now we have to create new game menu with this ID. So let's try to do that. 
uh, and here is a sample where they add the town menu. So to add our own game menu, I think we just start writing this thing. So starter add game menu. And the ID will be town workshop that we specified over here. The next argument is the menu text. And this will be, let's say this will be brewery init. Um, so in, in initialization, you can set things such as the flavor text. For example, villages have this text that describes the village. Um, you can also set things like the background image. But we don't really care about any of that. It is only a bit of polish, which we can skip for now. Um, and then you have the settlement overlay. So this will control things like uh, the top and bottom bars that you see when you are in a settlement. So in settlement, you see statistics like uh, the wealth or the prosperity and the militia and the heroes that are there. So this uh, overlay argument controls those overlays you see on the top of the screen. So we can just copy whatever they have with town, which is um, menu overlay settlement with both, and we don't even need to understand what that means. And the rest of the arguments are not important for us. So now the first button I think we should add uh, is leave button right we need some way of leaving so let's actually see how they do that they have add game menu option we can copy this up to this point so this text so here they have a text object which has this uh, this is localization string and so far i've been always destroying these localization strings but we can actually reuse this leave text. So we can leave the localization string and this text will be localized based on user's game language. We need to fix this menu ID and we need to give this unique, unique ID for the option ID. Um, I don't think um, for the condition, I don't think this needs to have a condition, but it needs to, we should still set um, the icon. So this also controls. So the option leaf type controls um, the visuals of the icon. And this should be like leave. So, uh, Yes, so this leave type leave will give us the icon that indicates that this is a leaving option. And we can always return true, meaning that, meaning that this button should always be visible. And what are you complaining here? Oh, nothing anymore. Consequence. Um, consequence will be that we go... Consequence will be that we go back to... Back to the town. So we can just do again switch to menu and we go back to town. That will be our consequence. And we should set is leave to true. So is leave true means that when we press tab key on our keyboard while we are in this menu, it will execute this option. And in this case, pressing tab will take us back to the town menu which is the correct behavior in my opinion. So now we can try this out. We have added our little game menu. And if we go to our brewery, you can see that we have this sort of, at this, po at this point in time, kind of boring menu here, but at least it is working properly and we can come back to the town menu like this. And I think we own a second pottery shop here, and if we change this to a brewery, you can see that now we have two buttons, and they look exactly the same, but that will soon change. So let's add a second button that will let us take the items 
from the inventory. So we want some sort of convenient way of taking the artisan beer from the inventory without having all the time go talk to the artisan brewer. At least if you own this brewery, I think it's fine that you can get it more conveniently. So um, take let's call this town where town uh, workshop inventory. I don't think we necessarily need a condition, but maybe we can set some sort of leaf type that looks a bit nicer for this one as well. So let's look at the types if there is something good for us. Maybe trade. Let's try if we like how trade looks. So this should give us the same icon that you have when you are going to the shop. And also we can always show this. Oh, and actually looking at the arguments, the next, the third one was supposed to be the text for this. So this should be, let's call this inventory as well. And the next, and the big question here will be, what is the consequence when you press this button? So I think we need some sort of way to confirm that the player actually wanted to take the items. So if we go to information manager, information manager has a couple of nice ways of showing you different confirmation dialogues. So, and these are called inquiries. So you have show inquiry, which will be just simple yes, no question. Then you have show text inquiry, which if we look at how this is used, um, you can see that this is like for renaming things. So this is changing your clan name. So this will be text box where you can write anything, execute, create save game. So this is used for writing your save game name. So this will give you basically text box. And then you have multi-selection inquiry. And the multi-selection inquiry we can find, for example, here in the leave members menu. So this is just a list of things where you can select one or multiples and then press either OK or cancel. Here you have only one button, but oh, you have cancel option here. So these different inquiries are just pretty simple ways of creating some sort of confirmation dialogues. So maybe for us, the simple yes, no question might be enough if your options if you want your ui to be basically just take all the items from the inventory or take nothing but let's say we want to actually implement this multi-selection inquiry so that we will have option to take um, any amount of the items from the inventory that we want so we need to do information manager multi-selection inquiry so multi-selection inquiry and we need data so we need to create this multi-selection inquiry data. And if we go look at how this is actually used. So they just used the constructor to create new multi-selection inquiry data. So let's do that as well. And here you have the title text. And this will be our inventory. Maybe we could find string with that from the game as well. So that we didn't so that we could reuse the text without having to do localization ourselves. But this is fine for now. What is description text? Um take items from the workshop inventory. Let's try that. Let's see if it makes sense. Then you have inquiry elements, a list of inquiry elements. Let's say, let's say we want to take that outside for now. Then you have is exit is exit shown. Let's say true. You can leave this if you want. And then max selectable option count. Let's say you want you can select any amount you want. So let's put like absurdly high number here. Then affirmation text will be take, 
negative text will be leave. Uh, we can reuse the leave text again. So where was the leave? Um, here we have leave with localization. So let's copy this. And put that here as our negative text. Then you have affirmative action and negative action. And affirmative, and each of these will take list of inquiry elements. And then you have the corresponding negative action which will be easier to write. So the negative action will be just do nothing. And the next argument would be sound event, but we don't need a sound event. And the positive action is that for each one of these, we want to take item away from the workshop. So let's take, let's get the artisan workshop. from our selected workshop, which is the thing that we stored when we pressed one of the buttons in the original sound menu. So let's get the artisan workshop and then let's uh, add to stock and negative the list count. So this is the amount that you selected. So let's remove that amount from the artisan workshop stock. And let's go to mobile party, main party, item roster and add to counts with the artisan and beer item and list count. So we remove from the workshop inventory and add to the main party inventory, just like this. And you can make this so that the artisan workshops have like an actual inventory, which would look exactly like when you go talk to a trader or to a caravan. But I think these multi-selection inquiries are very useful things and you should anyway learn to use them. You could figure out yourself how to show an actual inventory screen here. But for now, this is a very workable solution for us. But we are still missing the part where we populate this list of options. So let's do that now. And we also need to get the artisan workshop over here. I guess we need to get the, we need to get the amount that we have in stock because that will be the that will be how many of these items we want to add to the list. So selected workshop, yes, very good. And then so here we want to iterate from zero all the way to artisan workshop inventory stock, which will be how many items we have in our artisan workshop inventory and then for each of these we want to add new inquiry element let's see what this will be it will have it will have an object identifier which i think will be just our artisan beer object we can check that later and this will be called we can and title can be just our artisan beer name and this needs to be a string so name to string and then the image identifier will be just a new image identifier with and this an image identifier has a bunch of um, overloads and one of them will be with item object so we can just give this one our artisan beer item object as well. I want to confirm that this uh, first argument should indeed be our artisan beer. So let's go here and see. Here they, here they have this list. Oh, they put null here as the first argument. Let's see here. Add companion. They have list, and they put hero object. As the first one. Mm -hmm. And here we have list. 
the at siege engine type. Uh, I'm not sure. I guess it's fine. We can put the artisan beer there. Not conclusive, but I think this will be good enough that we can test it right now. So let's see. This will be empty right now. And the second inventory is also empty. So let's wait for a while now. Let me multiply campaign speed to 30. Now we waited two days. And we have two items here. If I take one, you can see that now it has only one here. If I go to the second artisan workshop, you can see this still has two over here. Now if I take both of these from the second one, now there should still be one over here in our first inventory. And as I said, you could use the actual this this actual inventory UI for this thing, but I think our multi-selection inquiry works just fine. So that is everything I wanted to tell you about adding game menus into your mod. And they are a very convenient way of adding UI and also patching the existing UI. So it is a great skill to have on your modding journey. So in the next episode, we are going to add the management screen for the workshops. And that will build up on this menu that we did here. Because you will also enter the management screen through this game menu that we created. But that's all for now. Thank you so much for watching. And I hope to see you in the next episode.